Hello, welcome to the channel. This is an update to uh, one month ownership of the uh, Tiger 900 GT Pro. At the time of recording, it's exactly one month since I uh, purchased this bike. With that, I'm going to go over with um, the likes and the dislikes of the bike. It's not going to be in any particular order, just how things come to mind. So, I'll mention all the, the positives first of all. It's a very smooth, comfortable bike to ride. The um, shift assist is very good, in particular going up the gears. Uh, I still find coming down the gears sometimes a little bit agricultural, so not as smooth. Still might be me getting used to it, but after a month I think I'd have uh, been quite familiar with it by now. So occasionally it just sounds a bit clunky as it's going down the gears. But going up the gears, uh, very smooth. It's very comfortable on the seat as well. The seat is really, really comfortable. Uh, I've never, in the time I've had it so far, which isn't long, but the times I've had rides on it, uh, I haven't come off the seat thinking I'm a bit sore. So. And I have had some re uh, rides now of a reasonable duration. The looks of the bike, very nice. It's nice um, adventure bike looking. Um, it doesn't look out of place. It's not a true enduro adventure bike, of course. I'll be predominantly riding this bike on the roads. But I do like the look of it. And I like the colour as well. Black would have been my first choice, uh, but the red uh, is very nice. Another good thing about the bike is the fuel economy. It's returning 4.55 litres to 100 kilometres, and in uh, old money for the UK, that is 62 miles to the gallon. So that's very good. So going through the gears with a shift assist there, nice and smooth. So I will mention some of the things I'm not overly too keen on and see where we go from there. So the most frustrating thing so far with this bike, for me personally, is the uh, the Bluetooth connectivity. <laughs> it's garbage. I can't believe that uh, this is a premium bike and that uh, a very solid motorcycle manufacturer is Triumph. Uh, but they have not got it right with this software for the, uh, the Bluetooth. It sucks. It's really bad. Now, the reason why it's really bad is uh, connectivity wise I've actually had to reset it several times now and uh, reconnect the bike to the um, the phone and vice versa and uh, it's not good so there's an app for the Triumph uh, software that's it's called Triumph app I think it is as simple as that uh, that does not connect properly have it I've had it connected once and now I can't connect to it. That's after several uh, unpairing and repairing of the devices. And uh, it just says last or disconnected. Last disconnected, I think it was saying the 8th of March. Well, it's the 5th of April today. It's never reconnected. Now that app isn't that great. You can plan uh, navigation uh, routes, which I'll come to that in a moment. And also you can just have a look at my garage, which tells you about the uh, kilometers you've done and the average miles per gallon or the litres to 100 kilometers. Now the navigation side of things isn't that good as well. 
uh, you just get a basic uh, arrow to tell you in which direction to go again I've not had success with uh, audio coming through so I can hear turn by turn audio uh, directions uh, no success with that so you just got to think what's the point I've got a mobile uh, phone in front of me a smartphone as you can see and I have a range of satellite navigation systems to, uh, to work from so why would you bother with the nav uh, on the on the Triumph, pointless. And just the general connectivity, it just, yeah, I've not had much luck with it. So uh, you only get this connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, um, as a standard, if you like, on this premium GT Pro. If you had the GT, then you'd have to pay extra for it. If anybody is considering the GT Pro specifically for wanting to connect to their uh, smartphones I wouldn't bother have a look at other people's reviews and comments about it it's not good if you're not bothered for the uh, preload adjustments and the other slight differences in electronics on this bike which isn't much there's not much between them you get a tire pressure monitoring on this bike uh, you have uh, five uh, rider modes you only have four on the GT if you wanted heated seats as well then that's an additional as well so for the GT Pro that's an additional sorry for the GT it's only on the GT Pro again it's an extra if you want it on the GT so if you're not bothered for bells and whistles just get a GT, GT. in Australia it's uh, approximately three thousand dollars cheaper that's a massive difference so, um, getting that <laughs> massive negative out of the way, what other things do I, I like? I don't like this. The brake fluid just sat there. It has to be somewhere, yes, but I don't like the bottles. I just much prefer a black box. It sort of blends in a bit more. Like that? No. I don't like that. But again, this is like a my personal taste if you like it doesn't really impact on the bike's performance of course the other thing I don't like is the mirrors uh, they're very perfectly functional up until a hundred kilometers an hour that is <laughs> and uh, or 60 miles an hour they start to vibrate so then you start getting that shimmering so when you're looking behind you don't see a clear image. So back to things that I do like. I love the cruise control. It's awesome. It's just set and forget, just like any cruise control. So to turn it on, you just press this set button, which turns the uh, cruise control on and then you just press set again at the speed you want to set it at and that's it and if you want to disengage the um, cruise control on the throttle you just twist it forwards not backwards <laughs> so as if you were decelerating just one snap of that and then it comes out of the cruise control so yeah really enjoy that cruise control Another thing that I do like, which uh, is not a standard feature as such, uh, but if anyone's considering the top box, you might not see it behind me, I'm riding with the top box on. Uh, that top box that I have is the 52 litre, uh, which will accommodate two full-faced helmets. Uh, so that's really, really good. So I think I've pretty much worked through my uh, my likes and my, my dislikes so far. Uh, my dislikes aren't massive, really. Uh, little niggles more than anything else. Uh, but very disappointed in that Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, in this day and age, uh, everything connects to everything, doesn't it, really? Uh, <laughs> not with a Triumph uh, system. 
to your smartphones with this <laughs> tram connectivity. Um, they've had it issues with it for years now, a few years. It doesn't sound like they've got it right. Um, I don't know whether there'll be software updates to improve it. Hopefully there will be uh, when this um, bike goes in for its service. I will talk to uh, my local Triumph dealership and ask them to have a look at that. I might even actually just give them a call and just ask them if that's they got any updates to it. Tell them what my version is and see if there's any improvements. Uh, but I doubt it. So let's go back to the garage and I'll show you a little bit more about the bike and uh, the TFT as well. It's easier to see uh, talking and showing it up close whilst I'm not riding really. I do have to keep my eyes on the road. Alright, so let's take a look at the TFT. So this is what you presented with when you uh, first turn on the ignition. And that's the screen I was uh, using whilst uh, riding. Please excuse that little screeching sound in the background if you can hear it. When the ignition's on, that noise happens. I don't know what it is. I've had a look on train forums. Uh, some say it's something or nothing. Some say you ought to have it looked at at the Triumph dealership. Um, seems to be a common occurrence on some bikes in Triumph. Not just this Tiger, but um, I don't know what it is. It's not often you just leave the ignition on, so uh, just bear with me for that sound. I think I can live with it, but again, it's one little niggle, one little minus on the old uh, likes or dislikes to the bike. Anyhow, we'll crack on. So as you can see, it's just showing the 4.55 litres to 100 kilometre, as I mentioned in the video. A uh, nice full tank of fuel there, 325 kilometre range. Uh, if you look at the bottom left hand corner, there's a fuel gauge as well. Bottom right hand corner is the, uh, the temperature of the bike. Nice green illumination to say which gear you're in, currently neutral. There's the toggle on the left hand side of the, ste of the uh, steering uh, column, handlebars which you actually manoeuvre through. So you can see top left hand corner it says fuel status. If I go down on the, the toggle, the toggle switch is just next to the horn on the left hand side as I've mentioned. So we go down it says the next service is the 12th of uh, 2022 December this year or 4,893 kilometres. You can adjust the screen, auto, high, low, I'll just leave it on auto. Change the colour style, I think it's in blue at this moment in time. It's on style 3 actually. I used to use the 4, which is that one. So on the left hand side as you see now the style 1, 2 and 3 and 4, that's where the, sat -nav, uh, the satellite navigation illuminates from and displays. But I'm actually using this uh, style three for now. Style two represents like this. Again, um, your fuel, it just has a, a sort of bottom left hand corner there. It shows you the fuel, the fuel status, temperature on the far right. So it has a similar style. Style one, again, it shows you the fuel the fuel and uh, the temperature on the, on the right hand side. Let's stick with three. So trip two, so I've just left it on this for, for pretty much since I've owned it. So I've done 363.8 kilometers. Averaging speed, believe it or not, look, 43.1 kilometers an hour. That's low speeds. I mean, that's pretty much urban riding really. Preload. This is on the GT Pro, so you can select pillion, rider with luggage, pillion with luggage. Obviously, I've got it set to, at this moment in time, to the, uh, just the rider. Dampening, you can actually adjust it as well, so you can make it softer or firmer. That'd be going firmer towards the sport side of things and then down to comfort. I think it was on three. 
You can check your M SMSs if your Bluetooth works. <laughs> and you know my thoughts on that Bluetooth. Call history. Uh, GPS. I think the phone has connected actually because it showed up some information there for me. Um, GPS. Again, if you've got the GPS uh, on, you'll see the turn by turn. Audio, as I mentioned, is a different matter. You can connect a GoPro. I've not tried it. I've got several GoPros, so I think that would confuse the whole thing. Music. You can uh, skip through your music, select through your music, and also play the volume to the, uh, sorry, increase or decrease the volume. Uh, that's contentious as well. Um, you can't always control, or I've never been able to control the volume from this control switch. That's another issue people seem to have through this whole Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, you can just have your taco running as uh, your revs are running as you're riding the bike, which isn't uh, a bad display, looks quite nice. And then you're back round to this, the styles. So that in a nutshell is uh, the TFT display. So just listen now, uh, obviously that thing is running in the background, I assume you can hear it. As soon as I turn the ignition off, That sounds gone. So that here is the switch, the control switch, to go through all those different stages in the TFT, up, down, left, right, and if you want to select something, you push the button in. As I mentioned before, cruise control is here. Press it down on the set to turn it on. Press it again at the appropriate speed you want to be at. What I didn't show was the um, home screen. There's a home switch which I'll show where that is in one moment in time. But let's turn the ignition back on. Apologies for that squeaky, noisy noise. Not a very uh, pleasant sound is that. So uh, just out of shot here, I'm going to be pressing this home button which takes you to your main menu. And again, by using that control switch, you can go through the riding modes. So rider, rain mode, road mode, sport, off-road. So that's the five uh, riding modes. I think it's the off-road that isn't on the, uh, the GT. Trip setup, as you can see, trip one, trip two, trip two display. So I'm not uh, going to change any of that as yet. Display setup, so color, high contrast, bright contrast, uh, visible trays. I think the visible trays, okay, that's what's visible then. Trip one, trip two, fuel status. So you can obviously turn these on and off. I think they're all switched on by default. I think in time actually I will turn off that SMS, GoPro, call status, call history, navigation, because I don't think I'll be using them. Gear shift indicator, default, user defined, disabled. Language of course, we all know what they are for. Units, you can obviously define your units, I think in kilometers and miles per gallon, etc. distance and economy. Let's have a look in that. So it's set as kilometers and 100 uh, liters, sorry, kilometers and liters to 100 kilometers. Let's actually just go to the miles and MPG UK, because that's where I'm from. <laughs> Not where I live though. I do live in Western Australia, Perth. Temperature in degrees or Fahrenheit, degrees for me and pressure again uh, pounds per square inch so that all works for me clock date so obviously you can change things that way for your clocks and your dates bluetooth this is the interesting thing where if you go down to the devices you shall see rider devices obviously if you have a pillion they can have their thing uh, set up 
and unpair device. I've been unpairing and pairing several times, as I've mentioned before. But rider devices, you'll see there, look, iPhone, Len. Name your Bluetooth unit. I called mine Tiger. <laughs> and then again, you can just reset to all the, the factory defaults. So that's the TFT in, in some detail. And that button there with the home side, that's the button you, you use. So that's the top box. It's 52 litres. As I mentioned, it will also fit two full-faced helmets. Mrs. Naked Biker's bike there. Well, it's a handsome looking bike, in my opinion. And let's go back to the video. I think somebody is still on their motorcycle. Okay, well, I think that's it for as much as I can tell you about so far as a, a one month on. Uh, fuel economy is really good. Uh, very, very comfortable bike to ride. Very smooth in the gears. Downshifting with a quick to shift. A little bit iffy from time to time. That could be me. By habit now, I just downshift just with the mechanical elements to it with the clutch lever. Up shift and just shift through the, uh, the quick shifter. All right, well, um, I'm happy enough with the bike, definitely happy with it, very, very happy actually. Just a few niggles, what can you say? No bike is perfect. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for watching. Thank you for finding us if you've only uh, found Naked Bikers of recent times. Uh, if you're hovering and contemplating maybe subscribing, why not? It's free. You can always unsubscribe if you're not happy with it. I won't be offended. Alright, thanks for your time. Bye for now.